Okay, folks, I've got myself a bag of goodies here. Let's take a look. Um, first up, I'll move this out of the way. Got a power supply base for, looks like a Palm computer here. So lots of interesting connectors going on here. Uh, uh, adapters, and I think it goes in a serial port, and there's like a, a serial port adapter to a USB with a charging base for by 3Com, and that would be for this Palm Top computer here. I've got this little guy right here and uh, this is a really nice little system I did a quick uh, uh, YouTube short with this one because I you know just wanted to kind of show it off a little bit didn't really feature it at all um, and someplace in here yeah I've got the uh, keyboard attachment that goes to the palm and this is a pretty nifty little package here opens up exposes the keyboard um, you just push this little guy and it just folds out and then I believe somehow, let's see if I can make this work, you got to put it on a flat surface and I think it, oh yeah, pushes together just like, just like that. And then you've got a keyboard. Now this is uh, pre-Bluetooth days, so what you would end up doing is taking your palm and, oh it's got a lot. There's a little fold out here someplace. Oh, there it is. Folds up, pops up. Yeah, just like that. Just puts it at an angle and then the palm just rests onto the keyboard. Plugs down inside there somehow. It's like a little harder to do with the case on. There we go. So now I've got the uh, palm with the keyboard. Uh, this one actually works. I'm gonna charge it up. Um, Linux has some software to uh, run the palm. So I'm gonna give that a try, but this one's gonna be kind of fun. Uh, the next thing that I wanna play with is uh, in this bag, another bag of go goodies. And this is a um, Apple Message Pad 120. So a Newton computer. Um, I've, I've, I've seen these in magazines before. Uh, this is the first one I've ever touched, um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, the one thing about this one, it, we were, uh, my friend and I were trying to get it to turn on, and uh, oh, look at this. This is something. It's got a little lock, so I don't know. If, okay, so that's uh, locked, and this is unlocked, um, but it's got the power over here, and the power did not really want to move. So I'm not sure if um, there's something there. I don't know, I can't remember how this thing opens here. Looks like maybe you push that button in. Ah. You have to play around with this one. Um, looks like it's about got a PCMCIA slot on the side, which is, that's very interesting. Um, I think this is probably the stylus. Yep, there we go little tiny stylus. Oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't that thing cool? Um, oh, this is interesting. I have no idea why it comes out, but it does. So that pops in. There we go. Um, let's see here. Looks like we've got a uh, screen adjustment here. This is where the batteries go. Don't know what kind of batteries that is. Oh, there, no, that's just for the card expansion. And someplace here, oh, I think that might be, oh, there we go. The lid, you push this push this button in here, and that opens the lid, and then you've got the Newton. Uh, do have a charger someplace for this thing, I think. Um, I'm gonna have to take a look at that. I don't even see where the charge port is on this guy. Huh, interesting. Someplace there's a charger. Like I said, I've never, I've never actually used one of these. Never, the first time I ever actually touched one. So, looks like I've got some kind of port here. Some kind of, yeah. There's the power. Power is on the side, and it looks like we got come some kind of like serial connection there. Um, so yeah, um, I'll be playing around with this. See if I can get this power to function. It looks like it's, it's kind of moving now. It wasn't moving earlier, so it does look like it's moving. So that's a good sign. That's just a matter of um, 
getting a charger for it and uh, see if we can get this thing charged up. Don't know what kind of batteries it uses. What does it use for batteries? Oh, here we go. Oh, we have some Rayovac batteries in here, uh, high energy Rayovacs. It's got some kind of a memory, uh, a battery for memory, a coin style battery there. Um, so maybe if I change out these batteries, maybe um, we can get this uh, machine to power up. So let's take a look at that. And then the next thing is we've got uh, user manuals. Looks like uh, this is for the Palm 5 organizer. Very nice to have that. And also the getting started guide with the uh, graffiti. Yeah, they used to call this graffiti. So it had its like its own scripting that you'd have to use to uh, do your character recognition. Um, so, yeah, let's um, move on to the next clip. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to cover next, but probably throw some batteries in this bad boy and see what we can do with it. Okay, so I found myself four Duracell batteries, which by the way, these things are just absolute garbage. Uh, at least when I bought these, these are probably a couple of years old. They expire in 2000 or 2029, but half of them have got leaks on them. And if you leave them inside of any of your electronics, it's going to corrode the, uh, the battery terminals. So. I would advise, you know, at least when these were made to avoid them. I don't know if the new Duracells are any better. Now, these are uh, Rayovac batteries, and they don't look like they've leaked, which is pretty good. Now, these are very old batteries. Let's see if there's a date on them anywhere. I'll take a peek. Um, it says uh, February 2028, so really not that old, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're dead because uh, I can't get this thing to power on by hitting the power button. But the power button also feels like it might be sticking, so not exactly sure, but we'll pop this apart and see if we can get some batteries in here and see if it makes any difference at all. Uh, another thing I just noticed is the batteries are actually installed incorrectly. Um, so maybe, maybe these Rayovacs are good. So what we'll do is we'll match up the terminals. So this one actually says the plus goes over here, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But let's try it. Let's put the plus over here and the plus over here. And we'll switch it around. So there's the negative. So and then we've got this one here. So let's flip it over, open it up, and I'm going to push the power and see if we get anything. Nothing. So this doesn't slide very easy, that's for sure. Yeah, it's kind of jammed up, so I might have to take this guy apart possibly and see what is causing the obstruction. Um, does have a lock here, but I don't think this has anything to do with that. I'm not exactly sure what this locks. Oh, so this is actually locking the PC MCIA slot from BMD eject. It doesn't have anything to do with the power. Um, but yeah, I can't really, it doesn't really want to move, unfortunately. So maybe, we can try to take it apart and see what's going on, on the inside. Before I do that, we'll test the batteries and make sure that uh, we've got some voltage there. One point five, which I think these are. Yep, one point five volts. Let's uh, take a look at the batteries that are inside the message pad one hundred and twenty. See if we have any voltage at all. Yeah. Yep, 1.5. So these are good batteries, um, or at least this one tested good. 
and make sure we get it in the right way. So we go positive, 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 positive. So all the batteries seem to be in there properly. I think what our issue is, is the switch itself is not allowing me to move it down. I don't really understand this lid. You gotta push this button and push up on the lid. Yeah, nothing. All right, step two. Let's see if we can get this switch figured out. See what's going on here. It's actually over here. See if we can figure that one out. Here's some cool facts about the message pad. Apple partnered with the British semiconductor company Advanced Risk Machines, ARM, originally Acorn Risk Machines, to supply a new risk processor for the message pad tablet computer. The new ARM 610 processor would also power the Acorn Risk PC 600, a super cool modular system that natively ran an advanced operating system called Risk OS. And to compete in the Microsoft dominated marketplace, it could even be expanded with the PC card to run DOS applications natively at full speed. Apple would discontinue the message pad in 1998, but this was not to be the end of Apple's relationship with the ARM, as it would go on to power the iPhone in 2007, as well as many other smartphones to this day. The ARM processor would even go on to replace Intel chipsets used in Apple's desktop computers with the introduction of the ARM-based M1 processor in 2020. Despite what many would see as a failure, the message pad started Apple's move into risk computing. Okay, so I was having a little trouble taking this apart and I didn't want to break it. So I went online, took a look at some videos. Uh, one of the first ones I ran across, uh, um, <laughs> It was a disassembly video and he absolutely destroyed this system, uh, taking it apart. So um, I wanted to just go easy on it. So I took it away for a little bit, got it up close where I could see it a little bit better. Um, I did end up removing the battery uh, here and I also removed a, sc a screw that was deep inside um, here, but that had no impact on removing the case. Um, but I was able to crack it and then actually get to the, uh, the power here, which you can see. And uh, when I flipped it up, it gave me the room I needed to, to move it. Um, the Newton came on. So right now it's telling me there's no backup battery. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's just a completely factory state right now. Um, I don't... I've never used a Newton before, so I really don't know how to do anything with it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I have no idea. No idea what, <laughs> what to do with this thing. Um, but I did look at an article on Wikipedia, and it looks like um, this is a pretty full-featured PDA, especially for the time. It's got all different kinds of things in it. Um, and especially depending on the ROM, if it has the ROM 2.0, it's much more usable. Now, another thing I found is this is the uh, Newton uh, message pad uh, 120, yeah, right there, and um, which is a, kind of a newer version of the original message pad, the 100 and the 110. Um, what's really kind of nice about this one is that it has a hard case. Um, the earlier ones had a, rubber dot, a rubbery case, uh, which the thing about the uh, 90s computers that had that rubber case design, it was really nice when it was new, it was comfortable, um, but uh, it gets sticky when it gets old. So uh, this machine, I think you could probably give it a good cleaning and it would look like new. It feels good, it's not all sticky. Um, the thing I do not want to do with this one is I don't want to tear it apart and damage it. Um, I think what would be nice is to be able to at least get the back cover off. Let me see if I can turn this off. Turn it off. There we go. Now it's off. Um, it would be nice to take the back cover off all the way um, to take a look at the capacitors, but... Um, I just really don't want to damage this one because this isn't mine. This belongs to my friend. So, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can put it back together and see if I can keep the, uh, the button free. So whatever, something got in the way and was not allowing this to move all the way. So you couldn't turn it on, but it's working fine now. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe try putting it back together. 
So it has little snaps that snap it together. And I was just careful putting it, pulling it apart. But like I said, I really don't want to um, damage it. So let's see if it'll still turn on. Snap to, nope, see, there's something obstruct. Oh, there it is, okay. It's a little stiff, but it's okay. Let's see if I can turn it off again. Yep. Turn it on, turn it off, good. Um, what is funny is uh, when I first turned it on, um, I had a black screen. And all it was is a contrast level, so I just had to adjust the contrast, and it works fine. So let's put this thing back together again. Now, one thing about this Newton is uh, our message pad is uh, you have to make sure you're using the right screwdriver for the job. Um, these little guys are very, very small um, uh, screwdriver. If you don't use the right Phillips screw head, you're going to strip these things. So, so just be weary if you're going to take one of these guys apart. And I don't know why, but they, they really put like a ton of torque on these things, which is really annoying. Let's see if I can put the battery in. Here we go. Just basically telling you, don't take out this battery without having these batteries in place or you'll lose everything, but should be good to go. Now I got three more of these little guys. So I do have to take the batteries out to get to those. Maybe it goes there. I don't think it did. Let me try it. Yep, that's where it goes. It says reset here, but maybe that's the reset button. I thought that was the reset, but there we go. All the screws are back in place. So let's put the batteries back in. A lot better than these Duracells. Here's the PCMC, oh, your Newton just charm. He just came to life. And this one, this one goes here. There we go. Ah, see, Newton 2.0. So this is a good ROM. That's very, very nice. So this one uh, is supposed to have better text recognition. Let's see here. Names. Dates. I think... Oh. Extras. She's a, a bit um, sluggish. <laughs> we got InSync. <laughs> InSync book. Inbox and outbox and calls. Let's see here. Let's see here. Connection, card, calculator. Let's take a look at the calculator. All right. This is a very nice looking little calculator. Nine times nine. It's got some really nice noises. Let's see, do we have a volume control? We got, hmm, I wonder how you adjust the volume. Volume everywhere, find. So, didn't find it. Uh, so, apparently that's not a help menu. Uh, I wonder if we can type in help. Help. Find. Searching names, searching dates, IO box, and sync box. Nothing. Okay, so that doesn't work. How about assist? There we go. Please 
how do I... Oh. Okay, so it has a bunch of stuff here. Assist. So it's uh, able to multitask. I've got a calculator running. I've got some kind of like date book here. I've got all kinds of little things going on. So let's see if I can... How do I... <laughs> void is E. <laughs> so I just typed in volume and I got void is E. That's good. Do it. Interpreting. The assistant cannot interpret this. Okay. How do I? Oh, there's the volume right there. See, I was looking all over for volume and it's right there. Here's the battery level. Very nice. I can rotate the screen. Rebuilding display. Your, put, your Newton PDA needs to be calibrated uh, to the way you naturally hold a pen. All right, so I can calibrate it. Calibrate? Don't know why there's a lizard there. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Um, don't know which is the best way to use this guy, but I mean, this is pretty nice. Um, let's see, do I have like a drawing program in here? Rotate, I can do that. Formulas, time zones, clocks, styles. Let's see what styles is. Okay. I, okay, so this allows you to change the font type, apparently, in your message book. Okay, so I think I, I want to go back to um, the rotate, and because uh, you know, with the menus here, it's kind of kind of weird. Um, say rotate. It's going to adjust it. Calls, connections, card, calculated form, styles, tricorder, Starfleet tricorder. I have no idea. How about an A? Let's see. What is, is that an A? That's a Q. What's an A? Huh. I have no idea. Oh, I did get an A, I guess. Oh, that was an A. Okay, so um, how about... What does that do? Is that good delete? Nope. It's, it's a line. How about a B? Will I do a B? Two. <laughs> What's a B? is okay <sighs> this is palm stuff someplace i think i had a thing that give you the graffiti i have no idea how about a c will it do a c c yeah does a c d no that came out as an a hmm All right, well, the tricorder is weird. What do we got here? When writing text, make sure the text recognizer is on. When drawing, make sure the graphics recognizer is on. I really wanna know where the drawing program is. If you do not want to wait for your message pad to read your handwriting, you can write in electronic ink. Make sure both recognizers are off. To convert the ink to text, tap twice on the word group and highlighted words. That's kind of cool. When writing numbers or words that aren't on the word list, tap the button. Leaves the box open as you write. To correct a word, tap up twice, then tap the choice on the list that it appears. To use a keyboard, tap twice where you want to enter text or numbers. For different keyboards, tap the keyboard button repeatedly. 
Extras. Tap Extras to see software on an inserted card in the Extras tabs. Okay, so you do this. Press to set time and date. Connection to connect to Windows or Macintosh computers. Um, tap the Action button to fax, print, send, duplicate, or delete. Tap up and down arrows to see more of what's looking, what you're looking at. Press the reset button inside the battery compartment if experiencing problems when your message pad with your message pad. Pressing reset does not erase information in your message pad. No, so it just resets the computer. Care. Clean the message pad, screen, and pen with a soft, dry cloth. Write and tap on the screen only with your message pad pen. So this little guy. Don't use anything else. This one's actually a little sticky. Um, let's see. Does it have the ability to... It doesn't like... It doesn't have like a stand capability. That would be kind of nice. It, it does snap here. If you push on it, it pulls and it closes. Nice. Let's try. Open. Off. So it's working great. All right, so we have one working Newton. Uh, kind of fun to play with. Uh, glad that it works. Now it's time to wrap this video up and get this message pad back to its rightful owner. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you'll join me soon. Until then, be excellent to each other and take care. Goodbye.